Gen Z is having the worst dating experience of any generation ever. Okay, that may be hyperbole. What we do know is that Gen Z is struggling with dating. And no matter how hard we try, no matter how many self-improvement books we read, no matter how many podcasts we watch, things don't seem to get any better. I'm the unspecialist. Let's have a serious conversation about why dating sucks for Gen Z. As I was thinking about this topic, many things came to mind. And perhaps the most striking of them is that nobody trusts each other anymore. Naturally, we're always worried about people's past and their track records. However, the real anxiety for many people comes right here in the present. We're anxious about people's intentions, uncertain about their sincerity, and that low level of trust leads many people to constantly take stock of the other person's availability, their interests, and their effort. And if any of those drops off, we automatically assume that they're onto something else and their commitment isn't serious or there's no commitment at all. As a result, nobody has that sense of stability and comfort that the other person is acting in good faith. Of course, being open and trusting is ideal, but in today's environment, that's equivalent to being naive and ripe for exploitation and nobody wants to get got. It doesn't help that for many in Generation Z, our observations and experiences tend to reinforce that cynical viewpoint. Maybe you've been burned or maybe you've seen people get burned and you decided that it's not worth it to put yourself out there like that. Which brings me to another big issue in Gen Z. And that's that lots of people don't have good social skills or they suck at communication. And that's at the heart of all this distrust. Consider this, we hear a lot of talk about men lacking social skills, guys not being able to talk to girls or being afraid to talk to girls. And of course, there's a lot of valid reasons for that. But what we miss in all this back and forth about communication is that communication is something that flows both ways. So upon close enough observation, you'll realize that there are many women who can't communicate and have poor social skills, if not just as many as the men. You can ask guys out here, there's lots of women who can't have a meaningful conversation or they just continue with dry, basic, canned responses. And of course, after a while, they'll get upset that the conversation is boring, but we can tell why. And on both sides, frankly, we have to acknowledge that lots of people simply aren't interesting enough. And of course, that's magnified by the lack of ability to have a normal conversation or even engage in banter back and forth. As a result, we have lots of men and women who don't communicate their thoughts and emotions properly to others, especially someone they're interested in, simply because they don't know how. This poor communication only leads to more misunderstandings, which adds to the distrust and anxiety that I mentioned before. And when you really think about it, all of this could be fixed by having some simple conversations. Which brings me to the next point. Many of us are afraid of having uncomfortable conversations. Addressing issues almost always gets uncomfortable. Sometimes even sharing opinions that you have can get really uncomfortable. Regardless, nothing gets fixed or nothing moves forward if these conversations don't happen. And of course, I understand, nobody wants to get hurt. However, if you want to progress and deal with issues, sometimes even the simplest ones, you have to risk getting hurt or even saying things that may hurt the person that you're interested in. Once both parties involved know that you're working towards a solution, that won't change the hurt and discomfort that may happen in the moment, but once the intent is understood and you know there's shared and common goals between the both of you, that pain is temporary and you'll come out in a better place on the other side of that disagreement. Naturally, this can't work if both sides aren't interested in a proper solution or if one or both people are continuously dwelling in negativity. Interesting enough, this connects perfectly to the next point. 
We take in a lot of negativity, whether that's growing up seeing bad and strained relationships, seeing the toxicity online, or even experiencing it firsthand. Everywhere we turn, things are pointing towards not engaging in relationships and avoiding dating altogether or anything with feelings involved. I'm not going to place the blame on podcasts and social media content because frankly, I believe we need to talk about these problems and it's more useful than the delusional and overly idealized version or conversations that we've been having about relationships and marriage, which arguably got us here in the first place. Because once the curtains were pulled back, lots of people saw the ugly truth and they were horrified. However, whenever we have these discussions, we have to be very careful. There's a thin line between a sober, realistic viewpoint and delusional negativity and doom. Because truthfully, for many people in many places, especially in the West, it's that bad. And that's why I think you should always try to understand your own circumstances. Stay grounded and remember what is without getting too caught up in the what ifs. I had a bunch of thoughts and different ideas for this last one, but I just decided to lump them all together. And I think maybe not the most important issue, but definitely one that needs some attention for Gen Z is that everything is expensive and it seems that materialism is also king at the same time. I know I said I wasn't going to blame podcasts, but if there's one thing I hate about the current podcast wave is that many podcasters and commentators are being quite duplicitous. On one hand, they'll talk about the need for genuine connection and understanding the other person and having real conversations and all this talk about being open, genuine and emotionally intimate during the dating process. But right after having those conversations, they'll spend so much time talking about money, who should pay, how much they should pay, how much they should spend, what gifts they should buy, etc. And yes, we understand that money is important for dating, relationships, marriage, all of that. However, once you've gotten that financial part out of the way and you understand that the person you're interested in makes good money, the money that you think is ideal, or you realize that you can work with this person, there's still lots of relationship work to be done. When do we start talking about coming to the other person in good faith and doing things and activities together that give you a proper chance to show who you are and learn more about the person that you're interested in? Many of these things don't require any money at all. Take a page out of those idealistic stories that you've heard from previous generations. Many folks' grandparents got to know each other a lot better on long walks, sitting at the beach, sitting in the park, or just spending time in some public space where they had the opportunity to have a nice, long, reasonable conversation. And I know because I feel it too, a lot of things are more expensive or difficult to do, but that just means we have to be more creative to avoid those hurdles and take advantage of opportunities to spend quality time together. I'm no professional, no psychologist, just another member of Gen Z sharing my thoughts and concerns about this particular problem. However, as I close out, I want to make note that for many of us in Gen Z, we'll have to be very creative and figure out a lot of these problems for ourselves because we're facing challenges that previous generations didn't have to face, especially at this magnitude, things like social media, online dating, and so much more. And in the face of all this negativity, setbacks, and frankly, a horrible environment for many people, we have to find ways to work towards that ideal of being open and authentic. My channel is primarily geared towards men. so. A lot of this message is specifically for them, but I'm sure others will be able to find it useful. Regardless, to the men, one of the things that I've noticed being a serious problem for men in my age group is forcing yourself into an archetype because you believe that's what women want. And frankly, that's ridiculous. The moment you start doing that, you're automatically playing a losing game. Because when the mask falls off, 
what then? And if the mask doesn't fall off and you manage to keep up the facade for as long as you possibly can, then you're living a lie. You're not being yourself. You're being somebody else just because you think that other person is more desirable. I'm sure I missed some major issues for Gen Z or there's some topics that I may not have discussed properly or could be developed further. And maybe even things that need correction. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you think Gen Z has it easier than any generation before? Or if you're a member of Generation Z, what difficulties do you encounter? How do you think we can get things back to a better place? Like the video if you think it was useful for you and don't be afraid to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching. Peace.